So Penny, you want to put just, you want to put righteous, you want to put even a small matter. I want to make sure we have that. Because this is going to reflect the essence of the just reward according to Jehovah's laws and his, his judgments it's based on his doctrine and teaching. So as we dive deeper into the parable and the labors that we've seen in here in Matthew chapter 20, starting at verse 1, we're going to to verse 16, workers are given equal wages regardless of the time spent laboring. So when we're looking at the parable, it unveils a profound message about Jehovah's righteous justice Revealing the reward is not measured by durations of service. Keep that in mind. It's not based on durations of service. That's what it's not. That's no, it's not on there. We got to keep that in mind. So it's not measured on base on, on durations of service, but by righteousness and integrity of the giver. So it highlights your whole ways is not based on human fairness, but it's based on divine justice. This exemplifies the reward through, through, through is perceived as a small matter in the human term, but it lines perfectly with divine equity. Everybody should get that. Everybody should understand that. Okay, so as we sit there and we see this, so, so the penny, we see this as a just now, we see in the penny as a just reward. This element is a just reward. That's how we got to see this. So as we see this penny as this just reward, it symbolizes not just this physical recompense, but it's a spiritual justice. So when we look at the biblical term, and it, and it signifies this just measure, the righteous standard of Jehovah's eye, his understanding, is a symbolism, but the penny reminds us during a period of spiritual darkness marked by scarcity, is insufficient. I want to show you, let me show you something. I want to show you this. Well, we can kind of get what I'm saying. We're going to look at Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 6 and 6. So I can get a little bit more of what we're talking about. Watch what happens. I want to make sure we, we, we look at this. Because we're going to look at a lot of different pieces here. We're going to look at a lot of different pieces here. And, it's, and it tells us in Revelation chapter 6. It said, I heard a voice in the midst of four beasts. A measure of wheat. Write that down on another on another on another line. A measure of wheat for a penny. Put that on the put that on another line. Don't put that together. Put it on another line. And then it says, including and three measures of barley. Write that for a penny. So put that on another line. Make sure we have it. Make sure we have it. And you see thou hurt not the oil. Put that on another line. And the wine, put that on another line. We got to understand it all. We have to understand all of it. Because that's the only way we're going to understand once we get into Revelation chapter 6, start going deeply through it. We have to understand that. So meaning, so Jehovah's fairness remains constant because the wages and we these symbols that he give for divine recompense, we got to understand this balance of reward is always just, sufficient, never excessive or lacking keep that in mind so now as we keep this we understand what's happening we got wheat and we have barley within this passages but we have to remember it spiritually it spiritually represents the substance of the soul emphasizing the need for humility and the importance of spiritual truth the core divine teachings than what we see so every time even in the times that we look at um, spiritual scarcity, where it's hard to find, the penny signifies the reliability of Jehovah's law, ensuring that each individual receives their just reward aligned with efforts and sincerity. Think about that. A lot of people don't like to think about that part, but it does. Let me, let me, let me, let, let's understand something in day. We're going to understand day. We're going to start tearing some of this down in day. And, and we're going to sit there and we're going to go back up today. We're going to understand day. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 20 and verse 2. And it tell you, and they agreed. The labor is for a penny a day. We want to understand that. Day. Keep this in mind. So to fully understand this day, which carries a serious spiritual meaning that extends beyond the literal understanding of day day it goes beyond that understanding 
So Day spiritually tells you it's more than just what a man calls 24 hour period a day, because that's what we call it. Scripture don't see it that way. So we need to adhere to scripture. Everybody follow me. Actually, I can do this and we can do some of this. So we can sit there and do some of this. Um, we can do day. We can do day. And we can keep that there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some other thing, elements with it. I'm going to do some other things with this. To where we can understand what day is. You got to understand what day is. It's more than just a 24-hour period. So, day to understand using an element is one we can call it enlightenment. So we want to put that there in uh, one second. Mm. We're gonna call it this one. And I want to cheat just now a little bit. So we're gonna call this first one enlightenment. And as we do this enlightenment. We're going to sit there and sit there and see right here. So one, we got day as enlightenment. Keep that there. We're going to keep day as enlightenment. Now, the reason I'm saying that, actually, we're going to, we're going to go back. We're going to kind of move back and forth. I want to make sure you understand it. I want to make sure you understand it. So the reason why this is more of a deep, it's a time, it's a divine understanding and illumination. And to make sure we, we follow that, it's here. It's here. We're going to see something. Once I get, once I find my thing, we're going to look at something. In John, we're going to John something to help you understand better. In John chapter 9, looking at verse 4. And you watch how he watch how he runs this. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. You see how he's how you look how it's carefully placed. Day. The night cometh, it's no longer day. See, we call it a full 24 hour period day, and he's not saying that. The night cometh where when no man works. You see how he's saying this. So we see this, and he referenced day symbolizes a period of spiritual opportunity with clarity and enlightenment when they are available, allowing one to fulfill your own purpose and to work in his vineyard. Keep this in mind. Keep that in mind. In fact, when you sit there and you see that, it's important. We're going to look at something else. I want to take you over here to John. We're going to go another place. We're going to look at John. We're going to look at um, uh, 11 and 9. I want to look at 11 and 9. And we're going to sit there and see more so what's happening. And it tells you right here. He's telling you right here what he's talking about. He says, are there not 12 hours in a day? You see, he don't see it the way we see it. He don't see it. I'm trying to highlight it. It won't highlight it. So I ain't going to worry about it. But you see, it's, there are 12 hours in the day. Everybody see that? I want to make sure everybody understand what day, day is. Because at night, can't no man work it. But day, there are 12 hours in day. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. You see how he's sitting there saying this? He's making this, I'm talking about extremely clear. So it clarifies there are 12 hours, one, in a day. There are 12 hours in the day. And we know that. So now we even know that. There are 12 hours. Let me put that there. Uh oh. 12 hours. We know that now. This is all there. This is, we, we getting it all from here. We getting it all from here. So we know it's 12 hours in the day. Now we know that. 
Now, we've got to keep this all in mind as we continually move forward, as we continue to move forward, because it's clarifying things. So it's showing that, that, that this spiritual window, this spiritual window is showing each and every one of this spiritual window has a limited time. The spiritual window is giving us a limited time. It is not continuous in a 24-hour cycle, but it, it has specific time frame which divine truth is revealed and understood. So the day represents a period of light. Spiritually, it illuminates the righteous and provides the opportunity to align with your holy commandments. So this understanding is more intricately tied to the idea of working with the purpose in urgency, knowing that the spiritual night in a time of darkness, confusion, is, is more of a missed opportunity when it comes to such work is no longer done. So day showing you spiritually is a moment of spiritual enlightenment in action, offering clarity in, in to pursue Jehovah's will. Keep this in mind. We're going to move a little bit further in one second. So I want to show you something to move to take it even a little bit further. We want to sit there and say something. I want to put something here to make sure you do this. And if you don't do it, then you don't do it. That's shame on you. So we're going to see it's functioning. It's functioning as as revelation. We got that. It's functioning as wisdom. And it's functioning as insight. It's functioning as all about all three of these. That's why it's functioning. It's functioning as all three. Now if we understand that, we can sit there, we can understand how this is actually moving moving besides me sitting there showing you in portmanteaus and different gatherings i'm showing you how this is spiritually functioning as it's functioning as wisdom it's functioning as revelation and insight so we have to have another one that's tied to this we have to have another one that's tied to this so when you have these tied keep in mind how this works keep in mind how this works when you have this tied, it functions now as time of revelation. Time of revelation. Keep that in mind. Because this time of revelation, well, let me show you. Show you how this works. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we had this time of revelation, meaning this. We have to look at something. Let's go over here to Isaiah chapter 60 and we're going to have verse 1 because we got to see where, where am I getting this information from. And we see this in Isaiah chapter 60. Verse, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. For I understand it is come in the glory, the eternal power of the Lord, the Spirit of God is risen upon thee. You see it right there. It's clear as day. The time of revelation is upon us. It's, it's clear as day here. So this this showing you that the arrival of the divine day is a moment of enlightenment and revelation where Jehovah light illuminates spiritual truth and once that was really once hidden, but this light symbolizes understanding serves as a vehicle now of this divine instruction allowing individuals to act accordingly to Jehovah's will. It's clear. So understanding that day aligns on how Jehovah gives his instruction in the main thing is what people will mix up. People will get mixed up because they say, oh, you get it any time. No, you're, you're t telling bold-faced lies. And you need to stop doing that because Scripture should, makes everything clear for us. Meaning this, he, he'll give his instructions and he'll seal them during the night. Actually, let me show you. Let me show you this. Because we're going to have a whole lot of people sitting there. No, it's not that. And you're just telling bold-faced lies. So you, people need to just stop lying. And, and just tell what the truth is. And we're going to see this in Job chapter 33, but we're going to look at 15. We're going to look at verse 16. Watch how he says this. In a dream, as he said, as he speaks, and in a vision at night. Next, we're going to tell you what? Let's, let's do this. Let's do this real quick. In Numbers chapter 12, we're going to look at verse 6. And when he, he spoke, he was speaking to Miriam and Aaron. He says, 
Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, I the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak to him in a dream. So, you understand this. Now watch what happens. In a dream and in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then, 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 he openeth the ears of men and sealeth his instructions. Everybody get that? This is scripture. This ain't something where men, oh no, well, it's, just this. it's not that. You see it. You see clearly in scripture what he's telling you. But you have people tell you all kinds of lies. But you see it clearly here in scripture what he's saying. So he opened the ears of men in their slumber, sealing their instructions while they are at rest. This highlights the understanding that divine guidance often comes in a moment of spiritual stillness or rest. So it's preparing individuals for the act when the day of illumination arises. So day, it's now showing you representing not just a time of action, but it's a period of divine clarity when understanding and obedience are called, are called for after Jehovah reveals his will during the night. This is clear. And this is pretty clear now. So when Jehovah seals his instruction, he prepares his people during the time of rest and still in his night in active fulfillment. Now we call to arise to execute his will. Understanding is further amplified. Actually, we we'll drop down. Let's go down a little bit. Let's go down to verse 11 in Isaiah 60, 11. It says, therefore, therefore, for that reason, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentile and that their king may be brought. Exactly. So now you understand everything. This this so show, this shows you this speaks of the gate open and continue, not being shut day or night. They always represent the readiness to fulfill the instructions of Jehovah when it's given to show in a period of divine action. So we have to pursue this without hindrance. So we gotta see that day serve this both. This moment of enlightenment and time for fulfillment. So Jehovah's purpose, when he commands once sealed in the night, are brought to light in action that reveals a deeper spiritual understanding of timing, of timing, preparation to fulfillment of the divine purpose of one's life. So all that equals something. All that equals something. Let's, 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 let's pull some more into it. Because we want to understand fully how this day works. So let's look at something. We're going to sit there and see, put some more in here. So now, what do this equals? This equals empathy? It might spell it wrong. If I do, don't worry about it. In empathy, where I do this. I spell phonetically. That's why I gotta check it. That's why I gotta check it. So in appearance, and I got two of these here. Okay, so it's an appearance. The epiphany. A manifestation. In unveiling is what it all is. So let me make this a little bit smaller. And you see here. You see here, day. Day, you see how day has this, all this here, all this information here. So what do this equals? All this comes up where we have to, it comes up where it equals things. So all this comes with, with discipline, 
one. So this all that you can get comes with discipline, obedience, and details to your duty with practice. Everybody understand that? All that I just showed you, all what I'm showing you here, all this come with discipline, obedience, and details to your duty with practice. That's what all this showing you. So people who come and just thinking they can get something and they just go do it, and they have none of that, they wasting your time. They lying to you. They are lying to you. Understand this. So why you look in scripture in day and, and, and let's switch it to back to the element. We're gonna switch it back to the element. We're gonna go back to the element. So let's go back to the element. So now let's look at it again. We're gonna go over here to Romans to find out back to the element. In Romans chapter 13, looking at verse 12, it tells us, watch how he said, watch how he using the words according to law that Paul is doing. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of what? Light. You see, he, they talk in these parables and they talk this parabolic speech to where none of us know what he's talking about unless you understand the law. So there's referencing what we have to see. So reference today, it speaks of living righteously, understanding the practicing of Jehovah's statute through obedience. So again, this light in this day is talking about more to it. We got to add some more to it. I'm telling you, I told you you're going to get crazy. So let's see. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can. Well, I'm going to see if I can copy that. Yeah, I can. So I'm going to put another piece with it. I got to put some more with it. So now we got to put obedient. So we got obedience. We got we got commandment. We got duty. All this, tied to all this is day. Actually, I'm gonna put all day. I'm gonna put day right here. All this falls under day. All of it. I'm just gonna do it this way. All this falls in that, all of it. In a day, understanding with the most high. So what you can sit there and see when he says, and this was the first day, all this was in a seed. Do y'all have to understand this? So we got the, 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 the epiphany of, a, of appearance, this manifestation, this unveiling, this obedience of the commandments and duty, this enlightenment, but it's 12 hours in a day to get this. Functioning as revelation, wisdom, and insight, the time of revelation to where you can get this. This is straightforward. Straightforward. This, <laughs> I'm telling you, some of y'all, so, some, some, I've got a lot of people so deserve to go to hell, they need to. Because every time they go inside of a building, all they get is, y'all need to do this, we need to raise money. And don't understand basic Bible understandings. Basic. So this, 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 all we have, it functions as more. So when you see this functioning as that, so they also function as light and illumination. Light and illumination. Let me let me let me show you what I'm saying. All this I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna show this to you. Actually, if I can find my couldn't find my cursor. So let's look at some of this. In First Thessalonians, we're gonna see that. I'm gonna mark it. Don't worry, I'm gonna mark it down just the way we'll be on the same part. In in uh, Second Thessalonians chapter um, uh, five 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 five, it says, and it tells watch how he says watch how he's saying this. Ye are all the children of light in the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. <laughs> Boy. Okay. So, so so let's look at this. Let's look at this again. I'm gonna sit there and see if I can copy. Okay, I can copy. 
So now we have more. We have more. Meaning this. We understand that. So day contrast is contrast. Meaning it's contrary to night. So it shows a reflection of righteousness. The light it, it, it versus the sin and darkness. So this emphasizes is a distinction. As he said, ye are children of the light. So the day is the similitude of walking according to the spirit, light and truth. So we see this here. So you put this here. Truth. And you got, you got righteousness. And you have purity. You have all this here. This is all day. We just doing day. We just working day. But it's more to this one word. When you want to understand it all within itself, how all this is in a seed. So we understand more so. Actually, I'm going to put this there because it builds on it. It builds on it, so I just build on it. So also, also, it's a time. It has, it has, they also have a time period. It's a time period. I want to put that in there. I want to put this in there. I want to put in age, and then we're going to go to it. But it says um, age, and we're going to look at epic. We're going to put that in there. Even though it's not the word that we want, but we're going to put that there. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a new era, basically why I'm saying that. E-R-A or D uh, of history. Okay, a history and then a season. So we got that there. All this there, but I wanna but I'm gonna show it to you. I want to show you this because it has to do a lot with a time period, a time period. So we got to see that. We want to see it all together. So understanding what I'm saying to where we can all be here. So this goes deeper. We just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into the day. We're going deep into the day. Even though it's light, many people don't understand it because they still live in darkness. Everybody follow what I'm saying? So even though people can see during the day, we said months ago, where I did a teaching where you see more accidents happen during the day than they do at night. <laughs> let me show it to you. But let me show it to you. I'm going to show you this as a time period. It's a time period. It goes deeper than that. So let's look at something. Let's look at something. We're going to look at Joel. We're going to look at Joel. I want to show you why. And we're going to look at Joel, but we're going to look at 2 1. Watch how he says this. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord. Oh, you got a time period. It's the time the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. It is nigh at hand. Why? Because one, we're children of the day. We'll see this again in Amos. Because this is talking about the day of now the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. Watch how this goes around. We want Amos. Why right here? We want Amos chapter 5. We want verse 18. And it says, now watch how he's sitting there saying this. He's letting you know. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Watch what he's saying. I want everybody to pay real close attention because it's going to get really dangerous on what people say, especially Christians love to say this. Watch what he said. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Just like I said, if I can live to be 1,400 years old, that's what I wish because I don't need this to happen on a time period that I'm looking for, but watch the way he says it. He says, Woe unto thee, woe unto that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is for you? You don't even know what your end is. You need all the time you can get to get it right. Everybody agree with that? Do everybody agree with that? Do everybody understand what I'm saying? You want all the time you can to get it right before the Lord comes. Can everybody, can everybody understand that? 
Everybody should understand. It should be pure, simple. Not saying that, oh, I can't wait till the Lord come back. I can't wait till he come back. We can go ahead and get a... You don't even know what your end is. That's why he said, to what end is it for you? You don't even know. You don't even know what it is. But watch what he says. It says, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Oh, that become more interesting. This, this tells you a specific time when Jehovah intervenes in man's history either for judgment or itself for salvation. It's going to be one of the two. Either it's going to be for judgment or it's going to be for salvation. So that's why I had that there because this, as I do my analysis, that's what comes up. It become a time of age. It's epic. It's a new time period of history. Everything changes. It's a new season. That's why, that's why that is there. That happens in a day. But his day to us is going to be darkness. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of us are going to get screwed up. A lot of, how many, I'll tell you what, re, before I move forward, how many people you know, Christians sit there and say, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait till the Lord come. Oh, I just can't wait for the Lord to come. Or many, some of you might have said that before. Oh, I can't wait for the Lord. I can't wait to get up out of here. I'm ready to go so I can get with the Lord. How many people done heard that? I, I used to hear that millions and millions of times. Exaggerating on the number, but I didn't heard it. I know I didn't heard it more than a thousand times. I didn't heard it. I constantly hear it. Constantly hear this stuff. So we, we, we have to see more so what, what this is doing. Day. We got to go back to day. Because we we working out day. Because day going to show us a lot of stuff in what Revelation is what we need to know. So we have to understand these in detail. So we want to look at another one. We want to look at another one to where he said, we got more in day. Yeah, got some more in day. You got some more in day. So day is a time of instructions. It's a time of instructions. So it's teachings. So we got teaching, we got guidance, and we got learning. This is there. All this is there. I got to move this up. Actually, let me move this up. We were sitting there like, man, you got out. Yeah, it's a lot. I told you it's a lot. When you want to understand a word fully spiritually you got to remember who you're dealing with you're dealing with the most high god this is what you're dealing with now let's understand it let's understand why i put that there let's understand why that is there we got to understand why it's there so what we're going to do we're going to look at something we're going to go over here to psalms 19 all this we have to pull from scripture to understand why this word is what it, what it is 19 and verse 2 it tell you day unto day day unto day utter a speech and night unto night show of knowledge wow <laughs> wow oh wow this shows this ongoing divine instruction and guidance in day unto day so he's constantly doing this every day every day every day now let's see how many people want to be honest here just people going to just be honest really how many people honestly study every day how many people honestly study every day and how many people if you do i if you don't in it's just simple it's just simple don't lie don't think you're lying to me because you're lying to god i'm just asking a question to see what the answer is if you do fine if you don't that's okay you just do it but but this this is the thing we just want people to be honest that's all it's nothing more but then with this i can encourage you on what need to be done i can encourage you to what need to be done so now i want to show all the ends what's going on this was a time and this is why we can help straighten out what need to happen we can all straighten out what need to happen i want you to look at this this is a time on what he's saying the teaching guidance and learning all this information that i showed you that i'm showing you right here all this information that i'm showing you is there so with that all i want you to do is take the time on what you see here the reason i say that is this 
you don't want to miss out on things. You don't want to miss out on things. Meaning this, as he said, day unto day utter his speech. He's giving you knowledge and understanding every day. He's raining bread every day. Every day he's raining bread. So if he's raining bread every day, we want to make sure we on game. Always stay, stay in the gym. Always. You always you have to stay in there. If I can't sit there and tell you anything else to do, put in your studies every day. Because he's going, well, let me show you what else is in day. Y'all ain't going to like the next one in day, but we got to go. We got to look at it got to look at it so the next one in day is real simple and you're going to sit there and see is there's only one part we got to see this all ends up to what to judgment all that ends up to judgment all of it based on all this on manifestation, unveiling your obedience to the commandments and your duty, there's enlightenment. 12 hours in a day, his functioning is his revelation, his wisdom. He's giving you insight of his revelations, giving you the truth and righteousness and the, and the purity in this, letting you know this time of, of, of change in this season with his teachings, his guidance and his lear, learning. Guess what? At the end, he gonna come up with a judgment based on us, what we have done. Everybody understanding this now. All this is tied to this. So if we sit there and we not doing this, we not doing this, please, I'm telling you, I'm giving you a clear warning on what he's telling you what we need to do. It's right here. It's going to come to a judgment. Let's look at it. It's not about, hey, let me go see what Elder Johnson got to say. I want to, no, let's do the work. Put in the work. Let's look at this. So within the day, the spiritual sense, the spiritual sense, we know this now is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, the moment of divine judgment shown as the day of the Lord. So this time when Jehovah righteous justice is, is now being carried out to individuals will be judged according to their works. This is what's going, let's look at something. <laughs> let's look at something. I'm telling you, this is why I be sitting there, people be thinking, I be trying to sit there, I be on the horn trying to, hey, watch out. He's coming. He's not playing with us. Let's look at Zephaniah chapter one. Start picking up at verse 14. Watch this. Day, uh, wait, the wrong one. It says, the great day of the Lord is near. Yeah, he is not playing. It is near in haste, in haste greatly, even the voice of the dead of the Lord, the mighty men, the ones who think they all this, that, and a bag of chips. Think about that. Everybody who think they this, that, and a bag of chips. They like to walk around. Oh, well, I'm a man of God. I, I do this. I study this. Oh, I, you can't study with me on this. And I, you know, I got an illumination on this. Don't you do that. Don't. Do it. You said that the mighty man should cry there bitterly. They're going to cry there bitterly, thinking they knew everything. Day is the day of wrath. That day is the day of wrath. He ain't playing. Be dummy if you want to, you step before him. Be dummy if you want to when you step before him. Please be dummy and see what's going to happen. Be dummy in front of him and sitting there acting like you with this, that, and a bag of chips. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. He ain't playing with us. You think he playing with us? I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to put you, how they, how they say that in the hood? I'm trying to put you up on game. <laughs> I'm trying to put you up on game. The, the day of wrath and all this, come on now. 
we get ready, we get ready going to Revelations deep into there, and we have to we folks we got to study. We have to study, y'all. Huh? We we got to put in work. Okay, I want everybody to look at it this way. I want y'all to think about it this way. Many of us is past the half century mark. And many of us might make it past the century mark. But it's going to come a time to where he's going to call these to come to, to come and go rest. Now, if you did this and you put in work in this short time, this short time, you put in the study, you can gain a long time, meaning eternity. However, if you sit there and you thinking, oh, I do this when I want to, I do this when I want to, well, I study a little bit today, I study a little bit tomorrow. In this short time that we're here, this short time we're here, I'm telling you, he gonna sit there, hell, I never knew you. You're not gonna gain the long time. You're not gonna get it. <sighs> I'm telling you, okay, let's, let's, let's look at something. That day of wrath going to come. It's coming. Actually, we don't want to pour this one. Let's do this one. Let's go to Revelation. We're going to go back to Revelation. I told you, because I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We're going to go back to Revelation chapter 20. We're going to look at verse 12. Now, here's the issue. This is why I'm trying to make sure we understand. He's watch how he's saying this and make sure we get what he's talking about. It said, and I saw the dead, small and great, those small and those mighty men who's who who these who these mighty men are, stand before God. And the books, meaning it's a whole bunch of stuff that will, these books is open. In another book. Now you got now you got one. So we got a bunch of books on one side, on the left, and he got one book on the right. Everybody follow me. You got a whole bunch of books on the left, and you got one book on the right. Everybody with me? You gotta be with me because we gotta go into it. Now, as we see this one book on the right, which is the book of life. Watch what he's going to get a clarity on. And the dead were judged out of the things which was written in the books. Not out of the book, out of the books, according to their works. We ain't studying. We ain't putting in work. So let's look at some of this. Let's, let's look at some of this. Let's just get a better understanding here. In Galatians, looking at chapter 5, picking it up at verse 19. We're going to sit there out of the books. It says, now the works of the flesh, that which was controlling, which are manifest, which are made known, which are these. Now, I'm going to ask everybody a question, and I, and I know what the answer should be. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me today. Don't lie to me today. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Spiritually, I ain't saying physically, I'm saying spiritually, not physically, I'm saying Spiritually, how many of us have committed adultery? How many spiritually have committed adultery to God? I or in? I want to wait. I want to look. I want to see this. I want to see this myself. And I'm going to tell my wife, can you put an eye in there for me? Put an eye for your husband. Put an eye for me. She don't like to put it in chat, but she can put it in chat. Put an eye for me. Because we all have done it. We all have committed this. We all committed this. this we all committed this thing. We all have committed adultery. Not physically, but we all did it spiritually. We sitting there respecting the flesh more than respect God. And we should be respecting God and then hold to that and then just don't be doing it physically because we know that's a similitude. We got it all screwed up. 
we sitting there, we 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 respecting the flesh in 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 just doing God all kinds of ways. We doing him all kinds of ways. How how is that fair? How is that we reasoning that out? That's craziness. How many of us that sat there who not married and they committed fornication, not physically, but spiritually. But some of us doing it physically because if you're not married and you're out there having, engaging in, in, in intimacy with other people, you're fornicating, period. You're fornicating. So now you're not just doing it physically, you're doing it spiritually. This is what I'm saying. We gotta be putting in work. He's gonna judge us. I, I don't want nobody to get judged out of the books. We have to get right. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, all these things we're gonna get judged out of. Which holds by 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 this we we seeking to be in the book of life. The names of those who, who walk righteously is going to be over there. So Judgment Day will expose those who have followed false doctrines. Such beliefs that, that they believe grace alone, they are saved. Grace alone. And they can continue to sin. This is one of the most common, one of the most modern Christian teachings in the world today. False doctrines that promote in the Christian circles, but then you got forty-five thousand plus doctrines in Christian religion. That's why you've seen those trailers talking about dead man walking. Billions, not millions, billions, billions of Christians today walking dead, tied up into these doctrines. The Old Testament laws, they say, is done away with. They no longer applicable to what, 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 what's going on today because Jesus paid it all for us, for the sin of all mankind. The misled Christians all over the world. We are not Christians here. I always make that clear. We are not Christians here. We are not tied to any Christian denomination. We are not tied to no camp. We're not tied to no one that has any other teacher. If you don't see their teachers here, you don't see their deacons here, we're not tied to them on no way, shape, or form. This is why I have to sit there. We have to do that. Come to find out, I was doing speaking engagements I didn't even know. I was tied to people I didn't even know nothing about. People sitting there saying they didn't came up under me. Where? I don't even know who you are. So all my brothers, my, my the elders and the deacons, they sitting there making it clear that we're not tied to nobody. I appreciate each and every one of them brothers. I appreciate each and every one for making those statements continually throughout the week. To let people know clearly we're not tied to nobody. We, if you want to find out who we tied to, go look in the book. We tied to Jehovah. That's who we tied to. We tied to Jehovah. We ain't tied to no other group. We ain't no group. We're sheep. So we sit there and you see this, where they sitting there, they talking about these things and in the teachings that's directed contradiction. Actually, I'll show you one. I'm going to show you this. A direct contradiction to this. And they go there and they use this for, for all the wrong reasons. In Matthew chapter 5, looking at verse 17, he says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy but to fulfill. Oh, he fulfilled them for us. No, that ain't what that said. He said he come to fulfill something. He said, Think not that I come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill. He come to, he fulfilled. No, he didn't. Where it explicitly says, 
think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophet. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. So we have to understand that term fulfill does not apply or say anything that the law is abolished, that Jesus or Yahweh Shai embodied the law of Christ and provided a perfect example and application that we should follow in his ways. His life was the manifestation of a complete obedience to Jehovah's statutes. So the idea that grace removes the necessity to follow Jehovah's commandments further is refuted. You can sit there. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. I'm, I'm going to show you what is if you refuted it. I'm bringing it up. I want to put it, put it there. I want to put it up there. In 6, uh, 6.15, he's going to tell you. In Romans chapter 6, verse 15. Watch what he says. Watch how clear he says here. In Romans 6.15, Paul, who knows the law, it says, What then? Shall we sin because we no longer under the law, but under grace? Why you ain't under the law? Why you are not under the law? I show it to you. Why you not under the law? Most of them are still. Let me show you something. Let me show you why he why Paul even speaks like this. So when you look at this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, the reason. We ain't none of the law because the law was our schoolmaster. It was a teaching tool showing you that we have to, you see how this sheep got killed? You see how these pigeons died? You see how these things got killed? That was a law showing you that something has to pay for that sin. It was a teaching method to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith to where we can get grace. So when we find out what something is true, now we can get out of it. Oh, no, I ain't doing that no more. That's what that is. Oh, won't you? Elder Johnson, but oh, I now know. Okay, I know not to do that no more. Yeah, you gonna make that. You gonna make that a pact with with the Most High. You gonna make that pact there. You gonna establish a covenant with Him. That's what you do. You gonna establish that. You gonna let Him know. Oh, I didn't know this, Lord. Are you guilty? Yeah, you guilty. But guess what? I'm not gonna do it again. And through your obedience to the end, now you can sit there and you can receive grace. He can throw that away. Because the law was our schoolmaster. So can we, shall we continue to sin because we're under grace? You got people who find out things are wrong and they continually sin. They continue to do it. Oh, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all so I can continually do it. You going to bust hell or bust hell so wide open it's going to be unreal. I wish he put me at the gate. Cause I, and I know some of y'all, I, I, I push you in there myself. I mean, it took and told you, but they, they, I told you that was, that was wrong. I sit there and think everything is good. So what shall you do? So grace shows the repentance. You remember to turn back from to your those eternal laws. Not the freedom to sin without consequence. Grace empowers believers to strive for obedience. Grace, so as you get this grace, as you continually understand more, now you can strive towards that obedience according to what you must do and righteous according to the Jehovah's laws. Not where they go in there, oh, Jesus, Jesus played it all. He played it all for me. Really? Really? His crucifixion was not intended for a blanket pardon for all sins. But a result of the sinfulness of mankind. These men who preferred to walk in darkness rather than light. Actually, he actually even tells you, he even tells you this stuff. He even tells you this. Let's look at this. And, and we sit there and, and we can finish discussing what we're talking about. In John 3, 19, he tells you, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their, their deeds were evil. This is what we into. This is what we have came to. Man, we done came into all these crazy words. This rebellious nature of Israel. What is wrong with us? We done gone plumb crazy. No excuse for continually sinning. And, and then you got some sit there and always want to put, always putting their sin and their iniquities on someone else. Always doing this. 
always say, oh no, it was this. Oh no, it was that. Oh no, it was this. Oh no, it was that. No. No. We, we want to look at the law. We want to look at the law and see what it says. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, looking at verse 16, we're going to see law. We're going to see law. It says, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the, for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Meaning, you can take Jesus out the equation. Because he ain't died for your sin. Take him out the equation. You're going to be put to death for your own sins. But our problem is so many of us want to be in these cliques. We want to get in these cliques. And you be in these cliques where everybody is. And, oh, yeah. And then they going around sitting there. Oh, Jesus paid it all. Really? Contradicting almost every verse in Scripture. This, this, this emphasizes the, the personal thing. So you're going to be put to death for what your grandfather did. How are you going to be put to death for what your great, great, great grandfather did? How are you going to be put to death for what your mama did? How are you going to be put to death for what your wife did? How are you going to be put to death for what your child did? That's craziness. You're going to be put to death for your own sin. This, this, actually, boy, all right, I'm trying to calm down. I need to calm down a little bit, but but, but we, got a, we got a problem here. We got a full-blown problem. In Ezekiel chapter 18, looking at verse 20, it says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, that neither the father shall bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Is that clear enough for everybody? Hopefully this was clear enough for everybody. Take Jesus out your sinful equations. Take him out of there. He ain't dying for, oh, well, I can continually sin in grace. I'm saved now. Okay, your butt going to bust hell wide open. This, this echoes this. So I'm going to show you even more so where we got to get deeper into this. Because it's stating that this soul, not the flesh, but your spirit, not the flesh, but your spirit that's sinning, it shall die. Not the flesh. The flesh is already committed to death, but that soul is going to go there. And that's why he's telling you that way. That's why he says it that way. These scriptures stress the importance of individual repentance and responsibility. So each person must stand before Jehovah and answer for the deeds they did. They can't stand there saying, well, he did this and did that. Well, Jesus paid it all. Well, Jesus paid it all. All right, boo-boo. Don't you ever think you're going to stand before God sitting there saying, I done did all these sins and I knew they were sins, but Jesus paid it all. That's nonsensical. That's, 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 that's ignorance. That his death absorbs the believers from observing the law of Jehovah. Deceive the world. The dangerous misinterpretations of grace lead Christians into a path of destruction. So Jesus' death called believers to turn away from sin to follow the righteous path of Jehovah commandment. So the Old Testament laws remind binding that Jehovah's word does not change. Period. I show it to you. I show it to you. We see it all the time. In Malachi, looking at verse 3 and chapter, chapter 3 and verse 6, it tells you, For I am the Lord, I change not. I'm not changing nothing. Nothing's going to be changed. He gets more into it in Psalms 89, verse 34. He tells you this, and he's pretty clear here. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is going on my lips. All this is being said clear. Clear. Clear as day. This does not remove the requirements where they say Jesus did it. It don't remove these requirements because he's telling you he ain't changing nothing. So on the day of the Lord, those 
who are calling themselves you lukewarm, you lukewarm. We'll look at it. Oh, we're going to look at it. Because I want to make sure you understand this. I want to make sure we understand each other. In, in Revelation chapter 3, look at that verse 16. It tells you, it says, So then, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You lukewarm. You look one. You want you want to you want to play both sides of the table. You neither fully committed to righteousness nor really holy unto rebellion. But you want to play both sides of the table. You're gonna be judged according to your works. You think about that. This includes Christians who claim the faith but continue to be in disobedience. This also includes the ones that's over here who claim that they're in truth, but still partially on their foot on the other side. I'm not here to play with you. People say, oh, it's cool. I'm not here to play with no one when it comes to the word of God. We have to continue because believing they can mix traditions of men with commandments of Jehovah. The biggest Christian lie that went out is dismisses the Old Testament entirely and claims that grace removes the need for the law. Will lead so many people into the lake of fire. It's unreal. The day of the Lord is going to come. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. And seeing this is the problem that all of us gonna run into. We people, oh, I can't wait till I leave. I can't wait. Okay, all right, keep waiting. Keep waiting, because it's coming. But when it comes, you might not like it. Let's look at something in Matthew chapter 25. I want to show you this, make sure you clearly under get it. It says, And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a sheep shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. This equals the same thing with judgment, reckoning, and trial. This is why I say make sure you study to show yourself approved unto God. Because when you see this day, and you see that multi-layered understanding, the biblical, or the biblical understanding, the revelation, the discipline, the, the truth in life, all equal to that. You better make sure you remember what's going on here. You make sure we need to remember that penny. Don't forget that penny. What we said with that penny is and what that penny spiritualized. Let's go back here and look at it again in, in Matthew chapter 20, but we're going to pick it up at verse 2 again. We're going right back there, and they agree for a penny a day. We got to get all this understanding. So this fairness and what we got to look at, what it symbolizes is recompense reflecting Jehovah fairness and balance and judgment. So in the parables of the workers in the vineyard, the same reward, the penny for their labor, regardless of how long they worked, the penny... It shows you righteous, just, this, this balance. It shows that Jehovah's equity in rewarding his people is based on fairness and obedience, not how long they have worked or how long they labored. So this day is what we've been saying all the time. I'm telling you a time of enlightenment and understanding, this moment where workers are received the rewards signifying the time when Jehovah's justice is revealed his promises is fulfilled. Recompense is aligned with, with the divine fairness, illustrating that his reward to those who labor in the vineyard always perfectly balanced. Always. A penny is when you compare to the vast, you look at the ocean, just think about the ocean and get time, go out there and, and who, who stays and in, in where you can go look at this ocean, this large body of water that looked like it has no end compared to the vast drops of water to fill it. Imagine trying to fill the ocean one drop at a time. 
Think about that. This would take countless drops of water, even in the slightest difference of this vastness. But put this in perspective. You got to put it in perspective. Over those, thinking about over a thousand drops, you would need to fill a 16 ounce glass of water. So you imagine how the ocean is a metaphor to hell. How the ocean is the same metaphor to hell. Small and great going to be there. Small and great is going to make it. They're going to make it to the lake of fire. Because we got to understand what's going on here. We got to remember what's going on and what the Bible tells us. Because when we look at the metaphor, looking at the ocean, we have to understand how it's working. So what the Bible tells us right here, it says, Therefore, for that reason, hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. In their glory, this internal power of their multitude in their pump. Oh, you pumped up. You pump pumped up. You didn't want to be in the gym. You, you want to go do your own thing. Hell had continued to enlarge itself to accommodate the increasingly number of souls that's going to be separated from God. Every drop, every soul that turns away from Jehovah commandments is filling this vast ocean of destruction, much like a drop of water that fills the ocean. Think about that. I want you to think about that real good. But here we are. Here we are. Most of y'all stuck with me. <laughs> a lot of y'all stuck with me. See, only a few of us seeking the truth of the word of Christ stand with the mere drops. So too few even to fill up a gallon jug. Meanwhile, billions and billions of Christians is following a false narrative, believing in a dead man's doctrine that he paid it all. Their souls is much like these endless drops pointing its expanding ocean of hell, binding, following doctrines of men, each were teaching wrong and barely have enough drops to fill a gallon jug with me. But if the Christian world is wrong, hell itself must make adjustments to accommodate the multitudes. So the truth the few is willing to seek the truth. Dive deep into Jehovah's word while many follow doctrines that led to the ever expanding ocean to hell. So on the other hand, the truth of Jehovah is if infinite. Wisdom and justice as the ocean fills with the numerous drops, but water drips and contributing to its holy. But so does the penny, symbolize the portion of divine knowledge, the righteous that's expensed to each of his followers. So every drop of the ocean is spiritually reflective of Jehovah's boundless knowledge, immeasurable, incomprehensible to man. Similarly to the penny that's, that, 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 that's provided to us daily, signifies Jehovah's perfect and just reward, which is not about material wealth, but rather a portion of the spiritual substance, wisdom, and justice allocated based on the obedience to adherence to his law. So in this deeper, this legal understanding of this penny, in this righteous recompense is small, yet sufficient. Perfectly measured out by Jehovah. It reflects not earthly riches, but the equity of divine law, ensuring that everyone who labors in his vineyard, regardless when they came into this truth, receive their due reward in the time of divine judgment. Every penny any day every penny mirrors that one drop in the ocean showing from the ocean made to the spiritual understanding of the infinite knowledge of fairness of Jehovah's system of justice this parable also emphasizes that Jehovah just reward as always exact balance and righteousness in perfect alignment to his eternal law so it's revealing the essence of righteousness judgment those who follow his commandments. So I tell you this and I tell you all to Christians, all Christians, all including Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, and these, these holiness churches, these Baptists, these Christian, uh, these churches of Christ, these camps, and all other denominations who come before Christ without having gained even one single penny have spent their time following the doctrines of men's and buildings rather than the truth of Jehovah. There was false teaching, there was a material wealth combined with those that Jesus paid it all or doctrine for dollars. 
lead these groups astray, causing them to prioritize earthly riches over relying on, on, on solely on grace without demonstrating any type of work instead of seeking the spiritual riches. That's why we got to look at those parables. When you look at the parable of the talent that I showed you in Matthew chapter 25, looking at verse 14 through 30. So Jehovah entrusted these various measures is what he did. And why we got to get into these and, and understand more. So why we keep going down and down and down and getting more into it. Because when we understand more of what he's talking about, because I know a lot of people sitting there saying, I don't know what in the hell this man saying. Because guess what? You ain't been here. You ain't been here. <laughs> you you got to learn here. You got to learn here. Here we go to work. Here we work. So we got to still remember with those measures, those talents is very the measure of responsibility to the service. So some had five talents, some had two, and others had one talent. But many squandered, which was given, chosen to bury those pennies, this complacency rather than growing the righteousness and obedience. Those who don't multiply those gifts, you don't multiply those gifts in the opportunity that's entrusted into you, you're going to face judgment and being cast into the art of darkness. Those who didn't labor will advance to Jehovah's kingdom and use those potential talents and will be rewarded for it. So I want you to think about something. Think about how Matthew used the term talent. I want you to think about how he used the term talent. See, which primarily it refers to weight and value, but it's also the way it linked to money, either by gold or silver, men and women, but spiritually, implication much deeper is showing you the function of the word talent. So in biblical time, it represents this large weight. And then when you look at talents with carnal side, they're going to sit there and say, well, a talent is, you know, about 75 pounds, about 75 pounds, 34 kilo, kilogram, about 34 kilogram. Really interesting. Interesting. See, when you use to measure gold, silver, and gold, men and women, so just as the ocean is vast and countless drops of water, each small, seemingly insignificant drop contributes to the weight that's in the vast entire ocean. So the same become understood with the talent. While it is considerable amount of weight and wealth, it's composed in a smaller measure, much like a drop in the ocean. Interesting, ain't it? Become really interesting now, ain't it? See, when we look at this parable right here, in Matthew 25, 14, I read earlier this morning, it tells you tells you about it and as we spoke about it we, we got into it but I want to I want to show you something I want to make sure we understand something we got to pull a law we got to pull a law to get this and understand it so in in, in Leviticus chapter 19 but we're gonna pick it up at verse 35 and we're gonna run over here to verse 35 and 36 it says ye should not do ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment in doctrine and teaching in meat yard in weight or in measure a just balances just weight a just ephah, a just hen shall ye have. I am the Lord your God. I am the spirit of your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, brought you out of this house of bondage, this house of ignorance. Emphasizes the fairness of integrity required to exchange the weight as Jehovah measured this spiritual responsibility that's on each and every one of us. Gain the spiritual understanding that cannot be purchased. the weight of the talent, the spiritual understanding with this symbolizes a great value, but it also has a great responsibility to it. Just as this vastness of the ocean compound on individual drops, spiritual journey composed in individual's obedience, every drop of water, the same in action contributes. The overall weight of a person's accountability and reward in Jehovah's eyes that refer to the same thing. Actually, I want to show you this. I want to show you that. One second. I want to show you that. Saying it, might well show it to you. Uh, Matthew 16 and verse 27, I know he's going to say it there. He says, Son of man, Son of man shall come in his glory of his Father and his messengers, and then shall reward every man according to his works. This companion is critical to consider the parable, to compare the, the parable of the talents. So each servant is entrusted to different numbers of talents. With five, some, two to some, and one to some. 
So the responsibility of the value of each talent is significant, reflecting the importance of being faithful even in small matters, adding to the greatest spiritual reward. This understanding weighs upon the emphasis of accumulating the value, much like the drop of water, accumulating the forms of the vast ocean, illustrating the death, the depth and the magnitude of our responsibility and used for the gifts that it goes out to everybody. So we got to understand this whole thing spiritually, entrusting, entrusting. So we got to see what this is. So now when we go back here, I want to show you what's going on here, show you how this all works. So we're going to go back over here to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, but I want to take you somewhere else. I want to pair this with where you clearly see what I'm saying, understand it, where I'm coming from. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, looking at verse 7, because most of them are going to sit there now. you got a whole lot of Christians who's over here right now going to sit there and go, go try to teach it, but I guarantee they're going to still fumble because they don't understand it. So this telling you the same thing. So the kingdom of heaven, like a man went to a far country and called his servant, and under one he gave five talents. We've got to understand what those talents are. Those talents are those talents are spiritual gifts outlined over here in First Corinthians that Paul has been telling you the entire time, according to the law. But people tell you that they sitting there and they know Paul and they don't know Paul because Paul was speaking of this saying, Paul spoke the same parable. The same identical parable that you see over here in Matthew is the same parable that you see in First Corinthians. And I promise you, ain't one never even did it. But we want to understand what those talents are. It's outlined. So you see right here. So it represents those, those, those what's entrusted. It says, in the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So to one is given the Spirit of the Word of Wisdom. See, so if you got that, you got that one talent. You got that gift. It's outlined right here. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's outlined. Upon the people who will work more, gain more. To another, word of knowledge, the same spirit. To another, faith, to the same same spirit. To another, gifts of healing, the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning the spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretations of tongues. But all these work at the self, the one self, same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Exactly the point. Exactly what the point was. So when we look at 25, those talents are given to each servant represents the unique gifts, the resources that Jehovah has entrusted to his prophets, to his apostles, to his evangelists, to his pastors, to his teachers, each according to their ability. Some will gain more. Some will be taken from because if they hiding that talent and not using it, that's taken and given away because he was a slowful servant. He was a slowful servant. Servant who we supposed to put out things all the time. But we don't. I didn't get that. Could you try again? But we don't, but we don't do that. We don't do those things all the time. We don't we we'll sit there and we we'll put out when we want to put out. We we'll play these games. When we should be all putting in work. There's a diversity of these spiritual gifts, the knowledge and faith and healing and prophecy. Each of these, it comes with a responsibility in multiplying these gifts. Distributed to each individual as a common good. So just as you see in the parable, you see it right there as clear as day. Right there in front of you, right front and center. You can't get around it. But you see a lot of people like to fake the funk. They'll sit there and act like they have a gift and they don't have it. And when you know they don't have it because they fumble. You know they don't have it because they fumble. They'll try to equal themselves to another. They'll try to equal themselves right to another or to another man. When they should have stayed in their own lane. So as it tells you, this is what's going on. Some men is given five talents. Some is given two, some is given one. So every man receives his portion from Jehovah's gifts and expected them to edify others for his kingdom. And some will gain more gifts as they continually do it. Some will gain more gifts. I promise you, not one Christian preacher got it. They don't even have one because they bury theirs. 
any preacher in any building, any any camp guy in any building, the gift is buried. So the core spiritual principle behind both passages is entrusted involve faithfulness and stewardship. Who diligently who uses these gifts and being given to receive greater responsibility while those squander their gifts and judgment, including losing the gifts which was given. In essence, this functioning and trust in the scriptures underscores the need for active participation in Jehovah's work. Those who are faithful in using a spiritual gift will be rewarded, while those who neglect to hide their gifts will face consequences. These divine expectations of trust and faithfulness emphasizes everyone, regardless of their initial endowment, is called to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom, and he is not playing. He's not playing with none of us. One thing that I learned that I never forget, one thing Dr. Shaw always said, you are put here, and I need you to be what you are or who you are to be because you, you are more of a battering ram than anything else. And you're going to come full circle to that. And I see more so what he's talking about today. So this is why I will address people. I will address things. I will address issues with people. And I correct it. Or I cut it away. I don't look at what other people well, what about this I don't know I deal with the, with the situation that's in front of me I don't judge it with anything else some people have problems with that that's not my problem that's their problem so when we see when people have wasted gifts service and buried their talents it represents those who neglect and suppress their gifts of fear doubt laziness refusing to invest in the spiritual work that they're called to do. So by contrasting those who actively engage in their talents and to multiply them, spiritually growing in knowledge and wisdom of Jehovah, a praise from Jehovah, and then greater responsibilities of the kingdom is given. So when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, looking at verse 7, it further highlights that these gifts is to every man that profit with all. The benefit of all. Spiritually, these talents are mentioned to edify the body of Christ, not for selfish gain or personal glory. Some of people want to go around, they get so high-minded, they get so high-minded, they can't hardly even speak to people. They want to talk to people as if they above God. Sit there, well, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do this. They're above God. That's why I make it personal thing. Many times when we go out and we go to these events, most times people see me sitting right there in the lobby with other people talking. Why? I can't sit there and say, okay, I'm only going to show up at this time and show up at this time and let people be glorified. That's stupidity. Many times you'll see me right there, but if we got work to do, I'll be doing, I'm going to do my work. I got to do what I got to do. But people like to sit there and now all of a sudden they think they're too good to talk to people. They're high-minded. Those gifts is taken. You have some knowledge and now you can't speak to nobody. You're special now. When you study, people say, well, I can't study with my wives. Really, if my wife wanna study, she, 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 she'll bother me. <laughs> she'll bother me. I tell you what, now she don't study with me. But she truly can. But the same thing is, she'll come in there, honey, you busy? And she know I'm studying. Yeah, yeah, I'm studying. Okay, she'll come sit her, she'll come sit her right down. And she'll proceed to ask a question. Even though, even though, I just told her I was studying. And she knew I was studying. But I'm not going to sit there and neglect her. If she asks a question, I'll answer it. She, sometimes she don't like the answer. She's trying to negotiate the answer. But I, I'm going to show her the truth. I'm not going to bend it. But at no time I would sit there and neglect it. See, now I'm so high-minded, I'm so above everything, I can't, no, uh, no, you cannot speak now. I am talking with the Lord. But, you know, please. But you got people who do that. People who do that. 
They think they're so high-minded now. Now they, when they do something, they're talking with the Lord. But if the person coming in there to speak with you, you let them speak. First thing she say, are you busy? She, she see me busy. I'm studying. She'll sit right there and say whatever she got to say. Sometimes she need a short answer. Sometimes she want a long one. I say, let me finish up what I'm doing and then we can go into it. Whether it be wisdom, healing, or prophecy carries an inherent responsibility to be used for Jehovah's glory, just as the parable of the talent. So failure to use these gifts and the responsibility results in judgment. As seen as a servant who buried the talent, reflecting spiritual stagnation, disobedience. So I want to show you something to make sure we all understand this and be, be clear on this. I want to make sure we're clear on this. Because this is where it goes in. And this is why so many of us end up getting stagnated. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 48, it tells us this. Actually, Luke 12, 48, yeah. And it says, But he that know not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. In whom men have committed much of him, they may ask the more. So whomsoever much is given, much is required of you. Much is going to be required from you, from the Most High. That's without question. So ultimately, these talents, these spiritual gifts, represents the divine trust and responsibility that Jehovah places on his people. This calling to grow and to multiply these gifts and advance his kingdom. Not for you to go around thinking you this and you that. The failure to do this that brings judgment, while faithfulness brings reward, eternal glory. The parables, this, these spiritual gifts reflect the same central theme and trust and trust in divine gifts and the purpose of righteousness, the stewardship of growth. So when it comes to accountability about the penny and the talent, the talent is accountability, and the penny is a reward, measure, and portion, which is a just recompense. So just as the parable in the matter that returns to the servant and accountable for things that is done, the talent is given to them where Jehovah inspects his people to account for everything that they have done and these gifts of knowledge and, and opportunities that he provides. So it comes with weight of responsibility. So when you look at that talent, it speaks of the weight and the spiritual responsibility that Jehovah gives his people. Varying in measure, responsibility is based on their abilities. And he expects them to increase and multiply these gifts as illustrated in the parable. So we can have these things where you can have this potential for multiplication because these talents must be actively used to produce the spiritual growth. The servants who buries these talents is condemned, showing those who neglect these spiritual responsibilities, these gifts of knowledge, are in danger of losing everything. Not some things, everything. So when you seek in the kingdom of God, you need to remember a couple of things. Don't you forget the weight, the value, the trust, the responsibility, and the accountability that you, have to, that you have to remember. Because whomsoever much is given, much is also required. So it's clear in biblical law, failure to use one of God's given gifts. These resources is transgression that leads to consequences. So just as the penny, the talent in the Bible holds a profound spiritual significance representing not only wealth, but those who entrust responsibility to Jehovah's place in, in his people. So this underscores the importance of accountability and faithfulness. The service, teaching that everyone will be judged based on how they have managed and multiplied the gift that was given to each and every one of them. So that's talent. It functions as a measure of value, trust, and responsibility, whether that's spiritual gift or knowledge or opportunities. It's entrusted by Jehovah and meant be multiplied for his glory not for yours to where you walk in high minded so as the spiritual penny showing the obedience of righteousness Jehovah lies forgotten in those individuals who chase false security worldly wealth when it comes to Jehovah nothing more than what they intentionally was given if cast under the outer darkness 
So we need to understand this, this oil also. We have to understand the oil. Let's look at something before we get started going into it. So Revelation, looking at chapter 6 and looking at 5 and 6. And it says, And when he had opened the third seal, we're getting ready to get into it. 